Good morning, Centenary. We are so glad to see you this morning. I would like to share with you some of the things that are coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, next week, you will be receiving a letter from the church office. Uh, it will be our annual stewardship mailing. Our theme this year is a widow's generosity. I hope you will prayerfully consider the requests that we make in that letter. I hope you will come on November 10th prepared with a pledge card already filled out, ready to offer that up to God. Our annual charge conference is coming up on October the 27th at 5.30. We will be hosting 10 or 11 other churches from around our area as we have a group charge conference together. In order to be prepared for that, we have to have our paperwork in and approved by our administrative council no later than two weeks beforehand. As a result, we will have a meeting on October the 15th, a Tuesday night at 7 p.m. of our full administrative council. If you're a part of that committee, please be present. It will be relatively short, but an important meeting. Finally this week, our youth are going to be on spring break beginning Sunday. So that means we will not have any youth activities this coming week. That includes Sunday night youth on the 13th and the 20th, as well as youth at Logos on the 16th of October. Uh, we will not be having Logos that week. And now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
morning, and there comes the sound. All right, we're so glad to see you this morning. Um, as my mother used to always tell me, take what I mean, not what I say. Um, they're on fall break this week, not spring break. Uh, but uh, we are so glad that you are here with us this week. Uh, we will not have Lovos this week. We will not have youth this week. But we are going to have the bishop here this afternoon. And uh, so we want to say thank you to all the volunteers who've helped us get ready for today's uh, Communities Impacting Poverty event. Uh, right after this service, our uh, ladies and uh, their helpers, uh, meaning probably some of their husbands, will be here helping to get reset and ready for that, uh, that event this afternoon, decorating tables and such. So uh, uh, we, uh, we just want to say thank you for all that you do. Uh, on that same note, uh, um, one of the things that we are uh, very much involved in is co helping communities in poverty uh, through our feeding programs. And this week, we received a certificate of appreciation for our work at St. John's Missionary Baptist Church here in Lawton, Feeding the Hungry. Uh, every month, we serve two meals a month to help feed the hungry right here in Lawton, Oklahoma. This certificate debated, uh, dated the 11th of October, 2024, uh, to Centenary United Methodist Church says, Our heartfelt thanks to our volunteers. Volunteers don't get paid, not because they're worthless, but because they are priceless. St. John's Missionary Baptist Church, thank you. Uh, so, uh, in recognition of all that you do, some of you give of your time to actually go and cook and serve. Uh, others uh, donate money and or uh, supplies for meals. Um, thank you. Uh, it's just one of the many ways in which we help our community and make a difference in the lives of uh, those people who are on the edge of poverty and in poverty here in Lawton, Oklahoma. So thank you for all that you do. To all of those of you who are with us in, in, on Facebook or uh, YouTube this morning, I want to say welcome as well. Please participate and worship in every way that you can, uh, including hitting the like button and saying uh, uh, good morning to us on Facebook. Uh, let us know if you have any prayer requests. Uh, I, w I do look at those, and I will be happy to lift up your prayers uh, during my weekly prayers and uh, hold you in prayer this week uh, if you have concerns that you would like to share. And now let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please stand as you are able and join our praise team as they lift up uh, our hearts towards God in music. Good morning, church. We're so glad to see you today. Let's worship. This is a, I kind of think it's not a raucous song, but it's a lively song. So I need you to sing with us. I search the world. But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise Treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along And put me back together Every desire Is now satisfied Oh, 
worship, I invite you to sit, to stand, to come to the altar. However you connect with God, that's all we ask for you today. Let's sing of Christ and the firm foundation that he is. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. We sing, I've still got joy. No God, joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. Cause I built my life on Jesus. He's never I 
Most gracious God, we come to you this morning lifting our hearts to you in prayer. Lord God, we trust in you and all that you bring. Through the good times and the bad, Lord, Lord, we know that you are there, that you walk beside us. Lord God, when trouble comes, we're tempted to blame you. Lord God, sometimes stuff just happens. Sometimes it has nothing to do with anything we've done or anything you've done. It's just dumb, rotten luck. Other times, God, it's a result of stupid things we've done or suffering through the consequences of our own actions. But through it all, you don't turn your back on us. You're there every step of the way. 
And through your grace, we make it through. Lord God, we pray that you would bless us, bless our church, bless the ministries that we are about, feeding the hungry, clothing the poor, making a difference in their lives in a way that alleviates some of the suffering that they endure. Lord God, help us to be voices for change and for action that will help to make all people able to be able to get through the day without so much worrying and so much strife. Lord God, we give you thanks for our blessings. And we remember that Jesus taught us that we are to be generous with what we have and we are to share with others and be a blessing to the nations. So God, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you've given us. We pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amos 5, 6 through 15 says this. Seek the Lord and live. Well, he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour, devour Bethel with no one to quench it. And you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground, the one who made Pleiades and Orion, and turns deep darkness into the morning and darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name, who makes destruction flash out against the strong, so that destruction comes upon the fortress. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from the levees of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their vine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict this righteous, who take and bribe, and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live, so that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. And it may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. All right, let the children come. Come on up here, Isaiah. Isaiah. Zai. Come on, buddy. Can you sit here by Tyler? Good boy. Very good. All right. We got Isaiah. I'm sorry. I had him backwards. Tyler's here. And this is Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah was already here. All right. Well, I want to introduce you to my buddy Hamish. This is Hamish right here. Say hi to Hamish. Hi. Hi, Hamish. Hi, Hamish. You know what Hamish is? What is Hamish? A monkey. He's a monkey. More specifically, he's an orangutan. All right. Uh, have you ever seen an orangutan in the zoo? No. Well, see, uh, have you ever seen a chimpanzee in the zoo? Little monkeys? I saw a monkey. I saw a gorilla. You saw a gorilla? Okay, that's a good reference. A gorilla is almost as big as an orangutan. Orangutans are actually a little bigger uh, than, uh, than a gorilla. So they're really big, right? Yeah. Well, in our Bible, in our scripture today, Jesus says to the disciples, it would be easier for a rich man, I'm, no, I'm sorry, it'd be easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle. You know what a needle is? A needle's a little bitty pin that you sew with, right? And it's got a little place in, in the top where you slide some thread through so that you can sew. That's a needle. It'd be easier for a camel. Do you, do you know what a camel is? 
Does it look like Hamish? No. no. It's actually even bigger than Hamish, isn't it? Have you seen a buffalo out in the in the? Uh, yeah, I saw a buffalo. Have you seen a buffalo out out in the refuge? I saw one. Big buffaloes. Have you seen those? Yeah. They're big, aren't they? They're they're about three or four times the size of Hamish's uh, uh, re relatives, the orangutans. Okay, so it would be easier for a buffalo, if you will, to fit through the eye of a needle, that little bitty spot in there in the needle than for a rich man, Jesus says, to enter into heaven. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? Have, you think we could get Hamish through the eye of a needle? You think it, you know, let's say that's eye of a needle. Can I get Hamish through there? You think so? Hamish, I got bad news for you. We're going to try to stick you through this needle. <laughs> oh, 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 he won't go. He won't go. He's too small. Imagine trying to put... a a buffalo through that or a camel that would oh you got a bunny too hi that would be much much harder wouldn't it it would be impossible for us right but the Bible tells us that for God nothing is impossible nothing is impossible so even though it would be as very very difficult or next to impossible the Bible tells us for a rich man to get into heaven, God says, with me it's possible. And that's because of grace. God loves us. God wants us, no matter whether we're rich or poor, to go to heaven and to be a part of his kingdom. But we can get put through the needle if someone could be behind him and push him through. You think if they pushed hard enough, he'd get through the needle, huh? Well... Maybe if God were pushing, that could happen. But uh, I'm not going to put Hamish through that, okay? So, remember, with God, all things are possible. Okay? Can you say that with me? Yes. Zai, can you say that with me? With God, all things are possible. All right? All right, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the children. And so sometimes... God, it just seems impossible. It seems impossible for us to be good and perfect. Uh, it's impossible for us to get all of our toys back in the toy box after we take them out. But nothing, God, is impossible with your help. So, Lord, we pray that you would help us, that you'd be with us, that you would make all things possible. Amen. Amen. All right. Miss Lily has a bag for you. I'm Mark Ashton, a member of Centenary United Methodist Church, and I want to outline for you some of the feeding ministries that we're involved in here at Centenary. We feed at uh, St. John's Missionary Baptist Church, which serves the Lawton View community and the community beyond Lawton View here in Lawton. We serve a hot lunch uh, provided for about 31 years. In fact, when we went down, when we sent down a team to help after Hurricane Andrew, we came back with the idea that we needed to serve people. And we did a survey in the community around the church and found that the greatest need was food. And so we started the ministry and that'd be about 31 years ago. We feed at St. John's on the second Monday and the third Tuesday of every month. We have a team of people that are very loyal and very reliable. Uh, we could always use more. Uh, members of our team. Now there are other congregations and churches throughout the community that also do that a week at a time, I mean a day at a time, for St. John's. And so uh, it's kind of a, a collage of, of Christian churches that help. If you want information about that uh, or would like to help us, just give me a call at 580-647-4955. Our second feeding ministry is our free neighborhood breakfast. Uh, this is a hot breakfast that we've served likewise since uh, Hurricane Andrew uh, for about 31 years. Uh, it's the fourth Saturday of each month. We feed about 100 to 175 people that are hungry and in need of sustenance. We've expanded that program to include a clothes closet and showers. And if you need help or any other information, call the church office, 355-5660.
United Methodist men provide 60 boxes of food at Thanksgiving and Christmas to needy families. We get lists from uh, Lincoln School as to needy families. We get a list from Cameron University Student Services for needy families, list uh, from other agencies that are impacted by uh, people that need food for the Christmas and Thanksgiving holiday. We package up those groceries into boxes and we have those picked up at the church and we're trying to make plans for that right now. So if you're interested in helping us and then boxing them up and then delivering them to people who come to the church uh, on a designated time and schedule to pick them up. Our next United Methodist Men's Meeting is October 16 at noon here in the Church Activity Center. So I would encourage you to come and help us plan for that and help us pull it off. If you need more information, call me, the number I've given before, 647-4955. United Methodist Men also serve pre-release inmates at Redemption Church several times per year. Uh, these are prisoners at the pre-release center here in Lawton who are getting ready to be released into their community and we do provide them uh, a hot meal and ministry. Our next supper is planned uh, for October 17, uh, 24, and finally, uh, Family Promise of Lawton. Family Promise is a transitional housing program that houses homeless families, and family is defined as a parent and at least one child. They provide that help at the day center, which is on 17th Street here in Lawton. We provide this for the guest families who are staying there. There's probably on an average of 14 plus uh, persons that live there. That's a combination of children and adults uh, during a uh, time that they receive uh, training in order to be self-sustaining uh, and so they can go out on their own and have housing. If you want more information, want to help us, just uh, give me a call at the number I've given you before. It is obvious that Centenary uh, takes Christ's message to feed the hungry seriously. Through food and modeling discipleship, we try to pull that off. Join us. At this time, let us bring our tithes and offerings to God. Gracious God, we thank you for all that you've given us. We pray, Lord, that as we give, that you would bless our hearts as much as our ministry blesses others. Use these gifts to the greater glory of your kingdom. Amen. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, the faithful promises. And time and time again, you have proven that you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. Let my heart speak a word and it come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the sun. God from age to age, though the earth may pass away, your words remain the same. Your history can prove there's nothing you can't do. You're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart burn when you speak a word.
This morning comes to us from Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. Your bulletins on the table says differently, but um, that was a typo, so hey, a big typo, cut and paste error, but anyways, here we go. So uh, Mark 10, 17 through 31. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher... What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack just one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked, and he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle 
than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter again said to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus says, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So I remember the very first time I moved. I moved from my home at the age of 18 in a dorm room at the University of Oklahoma. I had all of my worldly possessions in the back of a little green pinto. I had a suitcase filled with all my clothes. I had some bedding. Um, had a few plants. Um, that was about it, you know. When I moved out, it took uh, the pinto and a U-Haul trailer. I don't know what happened. And uh, isn't it amazing how we acquire stuff? You know, you don't realize how much stuff you have until you have to move. Um, on one of my many moves through the ministry, um, my father-in-law was helping me bring boxes and totes down out of the attic. He was at the bottom of the ladder and I was handing stuff down to him on the ladder and, and uh, one toad after another kept coming out and, uh, uh, and he began looking at them and stacking them on the garage floor and he says all of these are labeled Christmas. He says those aren't all Christmas are they? I said oh yes. Oh, every single one of them. We had over 13 boxes of Christmas stuff. And that didn't count the big boxes with the tree and stuff in it. And uh, he says, okay, you got enough Christmas stuff to cover several trees here. I said, yeah, we do. Uh, but, you know, Nancy, Nancy likes Christmas. And if it makes her happy, you know, we, we, we have the Christmas stuff. But she's not the only one. I have my stuff, too. Uh, you know, the last time we moved, I took a separate trailer and put my workbench on it, my table saw, my drill press, and, and all of the other tools that I have and loaded them all up on there and hauled them out to the Bray and uh, put them in the barn at the Bray. And uh, in addition to that, I had three canoes, three you know, because, you know, you, I've got a solo canoe. Uh, I've got a, a river slash lake canoe that I can use that's uh, uh, kind of my bang around canoe. And it'll hold up to three people. And it's, it's wide beam. Got a nice stable fishing platform that way. So, so there's that. And then I've got a nice uh, long Kevlar, 18-foot Kevlar canoe for boundary water tripping. And so, you know, I've got three canoes. I need them, right? We need our stuff. That's not to count all the other stuff. You know, when I move into the office here, I had, I don't know, 14, 15 boxes of books. That's just the books. And I got to tell you, that's down from about 45. The last two times I've moved, I've culled my library dramatically, saying, okay, I can donate those and give those away, you know. And so the last couple of times I've moved offices, I've donated at least six or eight boxes of books uh, going out. So uh, we have our stuff, right? 
Um, we have a wealth of stuff. Uh, so, uh, so Jesus was talking to this young man. This man had come along. Uh, he was, uh, you know, there wasn't anything particularly uh, that set this young man apart, except that he came up to Jesus and he asked him, he said, Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? It was a good question. It was a good question. And Jesus says, well, you know, you know the scripture. You know the Torah. You know the law. You should not murder, steal, bear false witness, commit adultery. You must put, the God, put God first, et cetera, et cetera. And the man interrupted him. He said, but, but teacher, I've done all these things since I was a boy. And Jesus says, okay. Then all that's left is for you to sell everything that you have, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. And we don't know what the young man did, except that we know that the story tells us that the man went away sad because he had a lot of stuff. You want me to sell my canoes? You want me to sell my table saw, my drill press? You want me to sell my five-inch telescope that I took to the, the, the uh, Black Mesa last week? You want me to sell all my stuff? Come on, Jesus. Take note that this young man in this scripture, now he's identified differently in other scriptures, but this young man in this scripture is not identified as being rich. Okay? It just says that he was saddened because he had a lot of stuff. This man is not identified as being rich, only that he had many possessions like me and maybe like you. But then, in later in the scripture, there's this rich man and a camel passing through the eye of a needle hyperbole, right? It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into heaven or a buffalo to pass through the needle or a Hamish or any other, anything else to pass through the eye of a needle. I'm doing good enough to just get a piece of string through the eye of a needle when I'm trying to darn my socks or to put a button back on my suit, much less make a camel pass through the eye of a needle. You and I all know that that's impossible, and that's the point. Jesus said that because that's the point. How hard indeed, he says, it is for anyone to enter the kingdom. But for rich people, it's quite impossible. In fact, he says, humanly speaking, it is impossible for anyone to be saved because we're all in the same boat. Rich or not. But the good news is, the good news is right there in the scripture, for God, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Now, it sometimes gets lost when we read this scripture and we hear this story that this young man who had many possessions. He walks away dejected because he had many possessions. But it sometimes gets lost. Those few words that go along with that. When Jesus hears him say, but teacher, I have kept all of these commandments since my youth. What does the scripture say next? It says, and Jesus loved him. He loved this young man. 
He loved him for his efforts. He loved him for his kind heart. He loved him for all that he had done up until that point. He loved him as a child of God. So when Jesus tells him to do five simple things, go, sell, give, come, and follow. Go, sell all that you have, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. Man left dejected, and I think Jesus was sad. So what's the point in all of this? What is the point in all of this? Why is Jesus telling this story? I think he puts his thumb right on the basic of human nature, is that we all are attracted to stuff. And sometimes we put more focus on our stuff than we should. Jesus does his very best to redirect our way of perceiving reality. By telling this story, by, by sharing this hyperbole of, uh, of the camel passing through the eye of a needle, he reminds us that it is relationships and our neighbors that matter more than our possessions. It's not about wealth and possessions, but our attitude about wealth and possessions. But it's also a little bit about wealth and our possessions. Because we're out of balance. We're hanging on. We're trying to keep what we got. And we are depending on ourselves for our salvation. Remember the initial question. The young man asked teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So who then can be saved? Who then can be saved? The truth is, there is nothing I can do to inherit eternal life. It's all about what God has done through Jesus Christ in offering us forgiveness, in offering us His grace. So who then can be saved? The good news is, is that we can all be saved. All things are possible through God. His grace makes it possible. Amen. As we prepare to uh, spend our time in prayer and, and song, I invite you to, to come. Uh, if uh, you would like to light a candle and lift up a prayer to God, I invite you to do that. We're going to serve communion here in a few moments. I'm running short on time, so I'm going to bounce as soon as it's done. Um, but we will take whatever time's necessary in order to offer you God's grace. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we might be for the whole world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, through your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The, body which we, the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup which we share is a sharing in the blood of Christ, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of our sins. Drink this, all of you, in remembrance of him. All my words fall short I've got nothing new How could I express You're invited to come to the table All my gratitude 
body of Christ to sing you. new song. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. And as I often do, every song must end. God, we thank you for this chance to come to your altar, to hear your words spoken to our hearts. We remember you, remember your sacrifice, and remember that it's only by you, through your name and your power, that we are saved. We lift up your name, your mighty name. We love you so much, God. It's in your son's name that I pray. Amen. Let us stand and respond with this last song today. I praise you in the valley. I praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. I praise when I'm down. I praise when outnumbered. I praise when surrounded. Praises 
long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise is a weapon that's more than a sound. My praise is the shout that brings Jericho down. As long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to praise the Lord. Come on, everybody. Oh, my soul. Go with God. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Sunday.